check check out the game out and you know tell us if, if we did a good job <laughs> very cool of course i have many more questions as to the motivations of inventing a game where you were a cloud that ruins people's days um, but I'm not going to ask them because I know you and I know exactly where this motivation is coming from. So I'll just leave it right there. <laughs> Hello, my name is Lingo, and this is Educative Sessions, a podcast with people in the developer world about their coding experiences. This is powered by Educative, which makes it easy for authors to provide interactive and adaptive courses for software developers. Today, my guest is Jakub Kalstatsky of Unbound Creations, and today we're going to talk about self-publishing as a small game design studio. So, uh, Jakub, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. It's been so great to finally get you on here. I've had so many things I wanted to talk to you about, and I know your story is incredible. So let's start off with your story of being an indie game developer. What first got you down this journey? Well, first of all, I've always been a nerd. Um, I've always been my computer and stuff, and I've always enjoyed creating things for games. Even back before I learned how to programming, I was playing with uh, like different map editors for games. I made like a small little pseudo RPG campaign for StarCraft uh, and the StarCraft nice. editor with all the scripting tools and stuff like that. Uh, so it's always something that I wanted to get into, and eventually I just found like a little Polish magazine. I'm from Poland originally, so I found this little Polish magazine, like, hey, how to learn how to uh, code with like a compiler on a CD. And that kind of was my gateway. Um, it was actually pa uh, Visual Pascal, I think of it, or just Pascal, I forget, mm -hmm. um, at, at the time. And that was kind of like my gateway. And then fast forward to years later, uh, me and my family came to US. I went to university and I got my first internship at a gaming company doing programming and uh, that was also great for my experience and like a lot of good practices I've learned I learned from Naked Sky Entertainment just they're not around anymore unfortunately but shout out to them mm -hmm. and again fast forward a bit later after I finished school I was living in Los Angeles I was kind of doing cinematography I was doing some freelance web development mm -hmm. and I was also working on my first indie game and the first, uh, it was called Postmortem One Must Die. And after about two years of on and off work, I finished it, I published it, and I put it on Steam Greenlight back when that was a thing, which was a bit more of a harder process to publish, where you basically kind of put your page up and people voted whether yay or nay should this be published on Steam. Mm -hmm. And after like a few months, it got approved. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was kind of the, like, oh crap, I'm gonna be selling this game. Uh, I need to get like a business license. I need to figure out like all this like accounting stuff. And mm -hmm. that's kind of when I officially founded the LLC for my studio and bound creations. Wow. And that sort of began my journey. Wow, that's incredible. I, I had no idea that you had such an eclectic uh, life that you actually cool. jabbed in a lot of different things that makes a lot of sense that in the end, the it all came down to you becoming an entrepreneur of your own, but founded by so much of your own experiences. So that's really cool. But as someone who, you know, not only codes and builds and designs things, you also now have a team with you. And I've wondered what it's like for you as both someone with technical skills and now managerial experiences. Uh, what is that experience like? And what are some of the struggles you have to go with? It's, first of all, I do, I admit that I do kind of like it in the sense that I think a lot of uh, indie developers, they just sort of want to, focus on the art, on sit down and creating the game. They don't want to think about like the business or marketing and stuff. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, as, as you've noticed, I am definitely a bit entrepreneurial and I kind of like all those things. Like I kind of get sick of coding. So it's nice to kind of like jump into the like uh, business side of things and feel like I'm in charge of things. And I get sick of that. So I jump in maybe into marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's also like a whole different type of creativity there. Uh, so I do kind of like, having that mix and match of different possibilities and uh, doing different things. Um, it's one, uh, for me, I feel like it's definitely something that's also necessary. And that's something I realized back on my one game is that I, I cannot do art. I'm really bad at it. I can draw, I can't model. Mm -hmm. I think I am good at figuring the direction. Like I've always used either placeholders or the very crude drawings mm -hmm. of what I want in the game. And that helps like artists get an idea of like, oh, this is the direction that, that I want it. 
And if you kind of compare a lot of my early like mock-ups or just crude work, like programmer art versus the final game, there's definitely a very uh, clear correlation. Um, but point is that uh, I definitely uh, realized early on that I'm going to need other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always that something that I don't see it as, you know, taking away from my art. Like some, I've seen some people struggle with the idea that I'll have to do everything myself or it's, it's not mine. Right. I've never uh, looked at it this way since I think it's more of a synergistic effect where like, I just know those are like, uh, I know we're probably gonna get into it later, but like sharing like some kind of like tips is like, you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses mm -hmm. and don't, you know, uh, like reach out for people who uh, can fill out where, you, where you're weak at. Um, yeah, yeah. I would then, like to actually, I wanna dig even before we get into that, um, other question is, I want to talk about like that delegation challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for someone, you know, you know a little bit of everything and especially when it comes to either things on a design level or a technical level, you know, it's very difficult to trust somebody with that. So what goes through your mind when you need to bring in somebody that needs to help you build the technical side of your work? Uh, do you walk it through them? Do you, you know, create a lot of documentation or is it sometimes a leap of faith? What is your own process? Uh, so that's something that I'm honestly still a little bit new at. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I've hired artists and I've worked with like other companies like for like localization and stuff. So I kind of know the process there. With development, I've only hired an extra developer once and that's on our uh, latest game, Rain on Your Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a process that I'm actually still figuring out. And when I was initially hiring a developer, I basically had to go through the process twice because the first person I found was actually not a good fit, even though the kind of seemed okay. Uh, and that was also a good reminder that my process at the time was just bad. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, even though I was going through the interview questions, I realized they were not really good at figuring out if the person is the right fit and has the necessary skills. Um, I did end up actually with a person that I was really very happy with, uh, Dane, um, and that was, I think it makes up both trying, like getting a good feel for the person, but also like a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now I've actually just finished like interviews again. It's like a year later since I did it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I've actually spent a bit of time going back to um, learning. And uh, I don't know if I'm getting off track, mm -hmm. but uh, stop me if I am. Uh, but like basically learning how do I interview better for a developer position specifically. Mm -hmm. So I like Googled like what are kind of design questions? What's the process like? Um, I found a GDC talk from someone on Ubisoft about like how to interview for design positions. That was actually pretty great as well. So I kind of went back to the drawing board and kind of come up with new questions. Um, I'm going to kind of skip over that now. Uh, let me know if you want me to. No, I mean, what's, what's, what's like, this is actually very relevant to our community and very relevant mm -hmm. to uh, what we are interested in educative is what are the recommendations or what are the thoughts processes of interviewing for the right kind of talent or giving people who are interviewing for you, for example, what would you want them to either know or say, or, you know, have ready, um, knowing that, you know, you're someone who's been just like them, but now you're in a different position of mm -hmm. being a manager and being a leader. So, uh, I, I want to segue into that a little bit more, actually, and talk a lot about what are some tokens of wisdom that you'd like to share either to other employers like yourself or to uh, people who are interviewing for indie game companies or companies in general. Uh, so first of all, I would say, please, please have a good portfolio that shows what you've done, preferably with videos. I've had so many, uh, like I was basically hiring sort of a, a un unity generalist someone who can basically jump in our project and uh, just create new levels for the game, which involves, you know, both figuring out how the old code base works, but also knowing how Unity works and also having a little bit of, a uh, bit of like um, design, like a mix of design and development. Uh, and I've seen so many people who would just, have, part of their portfolio would just link to their itch.io page, which has, you know, like pixel art thumbnails for their games and that's it. So there's no way for me to know what, like what they actually did without downloading and playing their games. And when I get like hundred applications, I'm honestly just don't have the time to play like 500 games from like different people. So those applicants who just straight up had like a 
have a paragraph describing what the game is and like a bunch of screenshots or a video preferably of what you worked on uh, is honestly gives you uh, you know like it just makes my job so much easier and makes me gonna look for your like prioritize your portfolio first mm -hmm. so that'd be like the big tip i would say is um approach it from that side um besides that it also i think depends a lot on just the position you're applying for right. a year ago when i was hiring i was looking more for an entry-level person so even like students i was open to you know and i was understanding i might need to train someone up a little bit more mm -hmm. this time around i kind of want to hit the ground running so i'm looking more for someone who's already has like a at least one published title uh preferably has experienced on uh, working with like a big bigger team or an existing code base so that's specifically what i'm going to look for like have they like joined a project halfway through and have we been able to figure it out uh so it kind of depends on what the uh, what the uh specific tasks uh, task is i think got it makes a lot of sense and i mean also is i really appreciate the note that you made that you know companies evolve you evolve so your needs and what you're willing to honestly do uh, for someone that you're bringing into your company changes as well. And these are a lot of things that people don't keep in mind, right? And I, I think uh, it's a, such a challenge for a lot of people if they apply coldly that like they're going to be one in hundreds and you have to do a lot to stand out. Um, I would add, you know, a big part of standing out is actually if you can like build a rapport with somebody, right? Like go and meet them somehow. And those kinds of memories at least we'll prioritize them in the mental cue that people are making. So we've come to the end, if you can believe it, with my questioning that I have for you. And I want to give you an opportunity to talk about your work or whatever kind of cause that you're passionate about, Yakub. The floor is yours. Uh, do you mean just like a shameless plug for a project or? Exactly that. Yes. Well, then I'll mention, uh, you can see, oh, the other side, right on your parade. It's a game we just released on April 15th on PC, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. It's also on Game Pass. And it's a game where you play as a cloud and ruin everybody's day. It's pretty cute. It's chaotic. It's silly. It's full of surprises and random things. Mm -hmm. Kind of like an adventure meets action meets puzzle. Uh, and that's sort of what uh, the experience I'm describing now are about. That's where we hired an extra developer. That's where uh, I've also been you know learning a lot uh, as a manager how to uh, how to go for that process better um and yeah uh, i would just say like check check out the game out and you know tell us if, if we did a good job <laughs> very cool of course i have many more questions as to the motivations of inventing a game where you were a cloud that ruins people's days um, but I'm not going to ask them because I know you and I know exactly where this motivation is coming from. So I'll just leave it right there. <laughs> but uh, Yakub, thank you so much for being on our show and really thank you for just sharing your journey and a lot of your wisdom as well. And I want to thank everybody who is watching this on YouTube or uh, checking us out on major podcasting apps as well. Appreciate you for being part of our audience. If you want to learn more about what we do, you can check us out, of course, at educative.io. So for all of us at Educative, thank you so much and happy learning. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that session. This episode is available on YouTube and also on many podcast platforms. If you'd like to be part of Educative Sessions, the form is open now to apply via the link below. You can also email me at lee at educative.io. Lastly, don't forget to like and comment on our content. Be sure to subscribe for us as well. And of course, you can learn more about us at educative.io. Happy learning.